Um, so, um, obviously today we are talking about the cost of digital archaeology. We can take that in a, a whole different uh, host of ways. Um, but I'd like to talk about a negative cost, if you will, rather than a financial cost, but a cost for archaeology in general uh, if we're not supporting our curators uh, within the planning process uh, as we kind of push this more digital approach. Um, so experience talking to a number of planning archaeologists around the country tells me that a lot of them don't really understand digital archaeology overly well. Um, quite simply, they haven't needed to do so in the past, um, so they've never really been pushed to acquire this knowledge. Um, are there any planning archaeologists in the audience? No? Okay. Um, well, having spoken to them, uh, you could say most kind of used to seeing the stuff on the left there, everyday record. Um, they know if that's appropriate or not. They know what a drawing should look like. Um, stuff on the right, maybe less so. They don't know exactly what they should be looking for in a photogrammetric record of a burial, for example. Um, so, you know, we need to be able to develop their skill sets to respond to this changing world that we're living in so that they can tell what's good from what's bad in a digital record. Um, so if we don't develop these skill sets in creators, if we don't help them develop these skill sets, um, then there are potentially serious consequences. Most obvious is for the archaeological record. Uh, if there's a lack of understanding of digital standards, there, um, amongst those that are signing off the work that's being done digitally, it's entirely possible that you end up with a, an incomplete or an inadequate archaeological record. <coughs> There's a wide range of techniques out there, lots of different methodologies for using them, um, and without an understanding of what's possible and how these are best used, um, you know they're not really going to be able to fully understand what's going on. So really, the consequence here is that the uh, archaeological community and arguably the wider public uh, suffers. Uh, from them not having this uh, this knowledge. This is kind of a, a doom and gloom, worst case scenario, uh, but you know it's not unheard of for commercial archaeologists to produce substandard work. It does happen, unfortunately, um, in both the digital and non-digital worlds. Um, so if the planning archaeologists aren't up to speed with what they should be looking for, you know, these consequences could actually happen. Um, so, uh, Key consideration for commercial work especially is efficiency, um, particularly for archaeological clients and archaeological commercial contractors. Uh, a lack of understanding might lead to planning archaeologists um, either making them carry out unnecessary work, uh, whether that be using slower techniques or carrying out work that just isn't really needed, uh, or even using analog technologies when digital ones might actually be a better <coughs> approach. A lack of standardisation across the country can also be an issue. Um, it can lead to extra work when you're having to do one thing for one county, one thing for another county. Um, so it needs to kind of be all brought along together. Ultimately, this lack of a stand, uh, understanding could lead to consequences for how widely we end up using digital archaeology. Everyone's pushing for it at the moment, but if the planning archaeologists don't fully understand it, uh, they're not going to commission, they're not going to recommend uh, these techniques, uh, and they're not, potentially not even going to permit you using them if you put them into a WSI, because they're not going to understand if it's appropriate or how to assess the quality of that work once it's done. Um, if this does happen, commercial units are going to be reluctant to invest even more in digital archaeology. The staff aren't going to acquire the relevant skills, and you could potentially end up with a bit of digital stagnation within the commercial sector. Obviously, academia is slightly different. People are always trying to push for uh, new things, um, but within the commercial sector, we could see a bit of a drop-off. So, doom and gloom, but what can we do about it? Uh, first obvious thing is preaching the benefits of digital archaeology. Uh, at Wessex, we've kind of already started this. We've done some CPD days for county archaeologists down in the southwest. Uh, we're planning another one in the next couple of months, uh, and we want to do more in the future to make them aware of just how much benefit we can get out of it. Having piqued their interest, we need to make sure that they have those skills, we get those, that, that training. Um, within the academic world, within the commercial world, uh, within bodies like Historic, Scotland, uh, Historic Environment Scotland and Historic England, um, there are people with the, with the knowledge and the skills. We 
we need to share that and understand that there might actually be some vested interests in various places, so we can't just rely on one group to, uh, to push an approach forward. It's got to be a balanced approach that everyone agrees on. Um, we also need guidance, obviously. We have some. Uh, HE put out survey guidance. They put out uh, stuff for laser scanning, photogrammetry, etc. Um, good guidance, plenty of useful stuff in there. Arguably, for non-experts, there's a bit too much. Um, you've got a 50-page document. How are curators going to dive into that and, and know what they actually need to understand, what are the key elements for them assessing the quality of the work? So I'd argue we need simplified documents that are just aimed directly at them to say, right, this is what you need to know, key information, this is what you should be looking out for, this is what it means. Um, we also need... Um, same sort of thing for, for practitioners to say, this is what you need to present to those curators, uh, rather than just generally ad advice on, on how to use the techniques. So what do they need to know? Um, number one rule of thumb, if it looks rubbish, it probably is, uh, is a good one. Um, but beyond that, they need to know where are techniques best used, uh, what the accuracy requirements are for different uh, purposes. And they need to have some idea of how you actually go about achieving that. Once that's all been done, they need to know what the stats mean about the data, what shows that it has quality, what shows that it's got high accuracy. This image, for example, if you know what it is, relatively easy to understand what it's showing. Um, but for someone that's never seen that kind of image before, if you shove that in front of their nose and say, look, I've got a good result, they're going to go, uh, yeah, sure. I don't really know what that means. And you can explain it to them, but if, again, from a commercial perspective, if you're saying to a curator, oh, look, you know, it shows it's really good, how do they know that they can actually trust uh, your opinion? Because you're saying it's good and it's your own work. Flip side of that, what do practitioners need to know? Um, as I said, they need to know what they need to be presenting to the curators to show them that their d data is accurate, that it's high quality data. They need to know how to run reproducible checks. Lots of people are running off left, right and centre, doing photogrammetry and scanning and stuff. But the understanding of how you actually check the quality of that data probably isn't quite as widespread. And they need to know how to make that data concise and easy to understand. So that, again, you can give it to the curators, they can look at it. You don't have a 50-page report from like a software or Adsoft software to, to scan through. You just have a little table that says, this is what you need to know, and they can assess it quite easily. Um, so yeah, the onus is on practitioners as well as curators to make this uh, an easy process. Um, we can go overboard with this, as I say, <coughs> these uh, various bits of software have endless reports that you can show, um, and a lot of that information is too much, you don't really need it. Um, so we need to have a practical balance on, on what we're using, what we're showing. Um, there are some key things I think they do need to be aware of though. Uh, equipment specifications, cameras, scanners, they need to know at least what those things mean. So when that stuff is in a WSI, they can make an assessment of whether it's appropriate. They need to understand processing parameters. So again, you can't bamboozle them with some techno jargon when you say, this is what we've done. Um, they need to understand the idea of uh, assessing the accuracy against some uh, independently recorded targets. Those familiar with survey work, that should be quite a straightforward uh, principle for them. Uh, things like VRTI increasingly being used, they need to understand the image sharpness, camera movement is, import, uh, is important. Uh, you want an even dome with your light, things like that. Um, GSD for photogrammetry, but arguably I would say that encourages us to use bad cameras. Again, if everyone's driving for good practice, that's not a problem. Um, but if uh, you have unscrupulous types in the commercial world, uh, which again, unfortunately we do have sometimes, um, it can encourage bad, bad practice. Um, and then laser scanning, registration accuracy uh, and point density are important things to understand. So to sum up, um, really it's the industry as a whole that needs to drive this forward, I think. We need help curators uh, to get to the place where they need to be so that we can all benefit fully from the, uh, the benefits of digital archaeology. Um, 
you know, it's a rare thing for all of us to come together, actually agree on something, but occasionally it happens. Uh, events like this, you know, help that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, there, there are people out there that prefer the traditional way sort of things, um, and some curators might be in that, in that uh, camp. But at Wessex we have a few of them, but we have brought them into the 21st century, so I think it's possible elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you.